Hey teachers, this is Mr. Johnson. I was looking at how to administer the Illuminate uh, assessments online and I found out, I think I found out how to do it. So I want your feedback on it. Let me know if it makes sense to you that we do it this way. So first things first, let's go to our common assessments. Um, over here, you find that for third through sixth grade, we have the oral reading record that we need to do before October 9th. We have the ELA interim four. And then for me, since it would be, I'm, my scholars are in third grade, I would take grade two, the grade two test, because that's from the previous grade level. And then I need to take the math inspect blue comprehensive from grade two as well. So again, you can check out this, depending on what grade you are, you might be able to, you might have different assessments that you have to take, but let's start with this one. So I, I have already assigned the ELA interim four. So let's go ahead and do the math one. So first things first, you gotta go to Illuminate's website. So to get here, you can go to scusd.edu slash illuminate and then click on Illuminate Login. Another way you can do this, with, which honestly is how I found it to begin with, is you can just go to any Google page, Google search, and just type in, hey, it actually came up right here, SCUSD Illuminate Login. I'll take you to the same page. So I Googled it, um, but you can also go straight there using this link, easy peasy. So click on Illuminate Login. And this takes you to this page, which you will use Google to sign in with. So I'm going to click on Google, sign in with Google rather. Slowly. All right. And so for me, it just jumps straight in. I've already signed in before, but this is your general Google stuff, you know, your, uh, your normal SCUSD password using your email and then your normal password. Okay, so now from here, you come into a section that looks like this. We're gonna click on view assessments. And um, down here, we can click on shared with me. That'll bring up all the assessments that are in particular shared with my group. And so Going back, I want to look for that specific assessment. So I want to look up the Math Inspect Blue Comprehensive, and I really want to look for it for grade two. So I'm just going to cut and paste. I'm just going to copy that. Control copy, or you can right click and copy either one. And I'm just going to search for it. See what comes up. No, no data available. So let's try instead being a little bit less specific. Let's try that, inspect blue comprehensive. No, let's try just inspect blue. Hey, there we go, got there. So you may have to play with your search parameters just like I did. It looks like inspect blue is the one that works for the math test, so that's fine. Um, so there is inspect grade two, 2021 paper allowable, nice. Let's go ahead and click on that and let's see what happens. Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff that you, you can do here to prepare. You can print out paper materials if you want to do that. Um, for me, I'm definitely going to go down here to administer online and let's do that. So click on online. All right, so now let's see. It says there are no administrations for this assessment, so add administration. So what I did for the previous test is I came up here to where it says add administration and I clicked it. Now there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, we know the, the parameter, the start of it, it was last week and the end is October 9th. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to October 9th for our window. And I'm going to leave the times the same. That's really not important. We're hopefully going to be done before that time anyway. So all academic years, nope. We want 2020 to 2021. All grade levels, nope. For me, this is third grade. 
We have our site all programmed in. We have the teacher, hey, that's me. Departments, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and click all departments for now. because I'm really not positive about some of this stuff. So all courses, I went ahead and clicked on, kept that the same, all sections, all students, because we're assigning this to every one of your kiddos. And then in each of these sections, you can go ahead and change some of these parameters as well. So there's online testing. I went ahead and clicked on that just to take a look at it. So things that are interesting is you can set the uh, how long they have, but if you leave it at the default, they have no time limit. They can go until they're finished. They only get to pause three times though. You can disallow pausing, but you have to only allow a certain number of pauses. I think three seems pretty reasonable. Um, the test isn't too long, so hopefully that's good enough. So how open do you want it? Yada, yada, yada. This is an important one. It's always on default, so you don't have to change anything for this to happen, but you wanna make sure it's allowed on any browser, not a locked browser, because any browser will give you a link for it later that the kids can sign up for. So basically, I didn't change anything in this. You can check it out if you want to, but I didn't change anything in the online testing part. For tool testings, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's calculators, are use item settings. That's the default for those. Not really sure what that means yet. Um, you could definitely click on enable for certain things like spell checker if you want to, but I, I, I'm just, for posterity's sake, I'm leaving it all as default. Um, a lot of this stuff is disabled, some is enabled. Digital notepads are enabled, strike through is enabled, but highlighting and dictionaries are not. Not sure why. So I left that as default and I'm not really sure what else to do about that. So I didn't change anything here either. Down in the online testing assessment review, finally, there is um, can kiddos uh, so I, I was, wasn't sure, it says view assessment and, te and teacher feedback. If you hover over this, it says this option allows a student to review their test submission and the answers they got correct or incorrect. Default is no, and I definitely want them to do that. So I, this is the only thing I actively changed. And it allows you to do this until uh, a certain date, and I changed it to the end of our test window, October 9th. So super, super interesting. Um, with key means, hello, there we go. This option allows a student to review their test sub submission um, and exposes the answer key. So they will be able to see which answer choice was the correct answer. I think for the purpose of this, I'm gonna leave this one as a no, just in case there are uh, complications, you know, if maybe they share the answers out or something, or if somebody missed the test and then they, somebody had access to the answer key, I don't necessarily want to be responsible for all that. So anyway, long story short, the only thing I changed in all these extra settings was online testing. I do want the kids to be able to see how they did. So I clicked on save. And ba 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 there we go. Now it's in here. So it's loading it, it's complete. So now I have this assessment all ready to go. Now, when you click on uh, live proctoring, it brings you up to this page here where you can see certain things like uh, which question the kiddos are on, how many questions they are on total, which, which, uh, how they responded to question one, how they responded to question two, and this is a way for you to actually see how they did. Um, that being said, click on exit to get out of here. I want to actually proctor it. So you can do this a couple of ways. Up here, if you click on test in portal, that means it's going to be a locked, very formal portal. I, we, there's no way we can really, really be involved with that. There's no way we can help the kids very easily to do a, an actual locked portal. So I'm going to do a test with a quick code, which allows them to uh, test it in a normal browser. So click on that. And that brings up this down here. So now that should be it. You're pretty much ready to go. What you do is over here, it says the access code. It actually gives you a code that you can click on. And it brings up this. 
And this is an actual straight up link that you can share with your classroom. So let me just show you what this looks like. Um, I'm gonna, you, you can put this into Google Classroom pretty easily. I'm gonna go ahead and add this link into a browser and show you where it takes you. If the kiddos click on this, boom, and asks for their student login. So they are gonna have to know their emails in order to log into this. So that's gonna be something you'll have to walk them through. Um, I can show you a little bit later if you can ask a little bit later about how to get access to their student emails, but this is something that they can do. Once they do this and they log in, it will bring them up with a message that says, hey, is this you? And if it is you, they can start. And as far as I know, this is how to do it. So thoughts, feedback, let me know um, how this works. See if this is okay. Thank you.